Who would have thought that the first person to burst onto the scene at the Qatar World Cup? It was the Queen of Qatar. On the opening day, in Qatar, the woman who stood at the pinnacle of power, in a $10 million maroon Prada couture, wearing a $2 million heron feather crown brooch. The man who looks down on everything with his eyes is the real moneymaker of the World Cup. From the right to host the World Cup to its current success, it's all because of Sheikha Moza bint Nasser's work behind the scenes. But who would have thought? Moza is the daughter of a criminal. She has a very dramatic life history. For Moza is a daughter of a powerful family. Her father was the head of a Qatari tribe. As the youngest daughter of the family, Moza was loved by her parents and lived a very good life. But that was all for naught when the new King Khalifa came to the throne. Because the greedy King Khalifa, he took over all the lucrative businesses. Oil and coal mines and high technology were all taken into his own hands. For the sake of the country's future, Moza's father stood up to him. Instead, he was imprisoned by the ruthless Khalifa. He was ordered never to leave prison. The ruthless Khalifa also ordered the family to be exiled to Sharia. The family was never allowed to return to Qatar. At the age of 12, Moza had lost everything and all she had left was her hatred. She vowed that she would return to Qatar. After six years of hard work and study, Moza was admitted to the best university in Qatar with honors. She came back to this place. It was here that Moza's life began to turn around. Because of her good looks and her ability to sing and dance, she was always surrounded by suitors. But she had more important things on her mind, so she didn't fall for anyone. She knew that Hamad, the son of her enemy, was at Qatar University on official business. Fate is a wonderful thing. When he was invited to the ball, he fell in love with Moza right away. And Moza knew that the opportunity to avenge his father's death had finally arrived. In the course of their time together, Hamad realized that Moza was not only beautiful but also very intelligent. Although Hamad already had a wife at the time, he told his father, Khalifa, he would never marry Moza. Although the old King Khalifa refused to marry Moza under threat of succession to the throne, but Hamad was very firm. He even threatened the old King Khalifa with his military power. The old King Khalifa was forced to agree to their marriage. Originally, King Khalifa thought that Moza, an 18-year-old woman, would not be able to make any big waves, but the Khalifa's eyes were not quite right. She's the real moneymaker behind the Qatar World Cup, the world's most profitable woman, Moza. Although Moza is Hamad's youngest wife, she is the world's most profitable woman. But Moza doesn't care about that, because she knows that the one who earns the money has the right to speak, to challenge the existing injustice. Moza became the first woman in Qatar not to wear a veil or a robe. Moza didn't like to hide her beauty and preferred to study fashion. Because of her freedom and spontaneity, she also became the most fashionable woman in the world. She has been on the cover of the world's top magazines many times. She didn't just know how to be fashionable, she knew how to make money. Although oil and coal were in the hands of the old king, Moza saw an opportunity in traditional pearling. Because pearling is one of the main industries in Qatar. But traditional pearling is usually done by selecting full-grained high-quality pearls to create top-quality pearls and selling them for a high price. But Moza found that the poor-quality pearls were wasted. Moza then advocated the use of small pearls for ornaments and jewelry. Because of the low cost and the fashionable nature of the jewelry, her pearl business soon became the number one in the country. This also helped many women to find employment. Once she had made her first profit, Moza then set her sights on international fashion brands. She first invested some of her money in Valentino. She went on to become a top five shareholder in Valentino LV Tiffany. With money in hand and a successful career, Moza decided to rescue her father. While her father-in-law was on holiday abroad with her husband Hamad, Moza seized power in Qatar. They even had the arrogance to call the old King Khalifa, informing him that I had inherited the throne and that you should stay abroad. Then Moza's husband Hamad became the new king of Qatar. Moza herself became a royal consort. Once everything was settled, Moza finally freed her father, who had been imprisoned for over 20 years. The richest place in the world, Qatar. Middle East. Qatar has invested $300 billion in the World Cup to make it a prestigious event. $300 billion has been invested in building a desert city. The cost of this World Cup is more than all the previous World Cups combined. In order to maintain a constant temperature, they've air-conditioned every street. They built a cruise ship with a capacity of tens of thousands of people to host VIPs. On the night of the opening ceremony, the streets of Qatar were like a luxury car show, no less than Dubai. The average person here can earn $3 million a year if they don't do anything every day. They're guaranteed a life from birth to death. With no money for medical care, they don't have to pay for medicine, they don't have to pay for school, 
they are even given a house. But these privileges are only given to local Qataris, thanks to their queen, Moza. After Moza and her husband ruled together, Moza didn't use her power to do anything wrong. Instead, she is thinking of better ways to develop the country, although Qatar's coal mines and oil account for more than half of the global market. But there was always going to be a time when this energy source would run out. So Moza exchanged all the oil and minerals for dollars, investing extensively abroad, buying real estate everywhere. She has properties all over the world. First she built the Shard in London. Then she set up the number one luxury department store in the UK. She even spent 900 million on the London Olympic Village to turn Qatar into a tourist city. Moza spent a fortune building four of the world's finest art galleries. She also exhibited all the paintings she had collected over the years. Moza had a great sense of style. In just two years, the artworks had increased in value significantly. Many art lovers came to Qatar to visit. Qatar's tourism industry was growing. In order to raise the country's profile again, Moza also competed with Japan, Australia, South Korea and the United States for the right to host the World Cup as Qatar's representative. When it was announced that Qatar had won the competition, Moza was so excited that he hugged everyone because Moza knew that with this World Cup, Qatar's fame would become even more global because it was the first Middle Eastern country to host the World Cup and Moza finally lifted the veil for the Middle Eastern girls with his ability. So what do you think of today's video? I look forward to your comments and responses. We'll be back next time.